Hey, welcome back to Chris Introvert Meditation Videos. We don't only have meditation videos here. We have videos about being an introvert, meditation videos, and cognitive behavior videos. We have all of that stuff under this gigantic umbrella and I'm still trying to figure out what I want this channel to be, but I definitely want it to be about meditation and self-care, hashtag, and also just being your amazing badass self. I mean, there's nothing wrong with celebrating who you are and that's what I want this channel to be about and that's what I want this community to be about. I want us to be about caring about who we are. It's so hard sometimes. I'm gonna go on a little mini baby tangent. It's so hard to be yourself now because so many people are trying to emulate other people and what they see as popular or it being a trend and there are so many various versions of one person out here in the world it's really hard to tell who's being authentic and who is being inauthentic but I think if you are being a copy of someone else you're being inauthentic to yourself so just be yourself celebrate who you are you're an amazing person you've come this far I mean, why be someone else? All those spots are already taken. All those parts in those movies have been cast and you are an original, you are unique. There's only one you. But now let us get to the topic of today's video, which will be about cognitive reframing. Now, what exactly is cognitive reframing you're saying? Well, it's a little thing that is based in psychology, but you do not have to have a, a psychology degree in order to understand what it is. But what you should have is just an open mind and the ability to realize that you do these things on a daily basis. And you know people who definitely do this on a daily basis. And don't worry, don't worry, it's all beneath the veil. We aren't super fully aware that we're doing it, but it is happening. So before we start getting into a strategy on how to reframe your thoughts, Let's first go into what exactly is cognitive reframing. Cognitive reframing is a technique used to shift your mindset so you're able to look at a situation, person, or relationship from a slightly different perspective. Now the word that we are really going to drill down on is perspective. Now what does that mean? Let's say you're a bird. Hello bird. You are flying in the sky and you see the land below you and all you see is little dots and little specks of colors and you think, wow, the world is so weird and just not where it's at. Now the lower you get, you start to see more detail. Now those little green specks, those are now trees. And those little black dots that were moving, those are people. Those little gray squares you saw, those are buildings. Now you're getting closer and closer and closer. Now you're on the ground. Now there's a street. You see very tall trees, very tall buildings, very tall humanoid structures walking around. This is a different perspective. You are no longer above what's happening. You are now interacting with what is happening. So when we have problems, instead of looking at our problems when we are there in the mix of it, we have to go above the problem and look down at it to really see all the different parts that help to assemble what that problem is or that situation or whatever it is. We need to view it from a different perspective, a different attitude, a different viewpoint. All those words are interchangeable, but they all basically mean the same thing. So that's what we are going to really discuss today. And it's it's something that I can say has definitely been a struggle for me in my own personal life because you look at things and how they are and you think they're just bad. That's how you label them is just bad and it's happening to me and I don't like it. And why is this happening? You have all these little negative connotations just digging at you 24 seven and you have no reprieve from them. There's no where you can even hide not even in your own dreams because it's literally in your dreams and it becomes a nightmare and then you could wake up and <laughs> have sleep paralysis which i have and which is terrible so in the comments just drop down if you've ever had sleep paralysis or you're familiar with it or you've heard stories about it it's really not a fun experience to have and also while you're at it might as well hit the subscribe button because we are on our way to a thousand subscribers and when we hit a thousand subscribers, I get to do on video videos for you guys. So I'm super excited about that. You get to see me fully animated and doing the whole humanoid thing. But uh, let us get back to cognitive reframing. Now, this might be a trigger warning for some, but a lot of people say the abuse that you went through when you were younger made you who you are today. I don't like hearing that. It sounds so terrible. It's like you had to grow up in a toxic environment in order to be who you are. But the funny thing is you were always going to be the person that you were 
despite all the terrible things that happen to you, you are not born to be X, Y, and Z because of abuse. You were just born that way. You were already born resilient. You were born strong. You were born capable. You are still capable of all of those things despite what happened to you. The person or persons that inflicted that abuse on you were trying to dim your light, but they couldn't because you are just extremely voluminous and, and amazing and illuminating. They were upset that you were those things. You just came out into the world already just sparkling and fantastic. And they saw something in you that they wanted, that they just disliked and were trying to take it away from you. And that started to dim who you were in, in many people, in me especially. I only could speak for myself, but it made me feel bad. It made me feel like I wasn't worthy of love or success or anything that's happened in my life. I just felt that it was just something that I didn't deserve and something that I didn't need. Like anything positive, I didn't need it. Like I didn't want any part of it. I became severely avoidant and I'm still dealing with that now. So just drop it in the comments if you have experienced that too, where you think I don't deserve things good things because of the bad things that happened to me it's like you are still punishing yourself and that person that hurt you so badly is still living inside of your head rent free unfortunately and you gotta evict them we have to get them out of there they're not allowed they're being squatters so just know that the stuff that happened to you in your life did not make you the person you are now the abuse that happened to you did not make you into the person you are now you were already that person so that is truly empowering to know that that person couldn't take away who you were intrinsically even though they tried so hard and I know people are struggling to overcome those thoughts right now I can feel it and it's so sad to think that you feel that you can't have the life that you always wanted to have because of the shame that you're carrying around with you. And we're going to talk about some ways on how you can free yourself from living in that uh, way of being. And one of the, the, the best things that we can do for our life is just to reframe the things that have happened to us and know that it's not our fault and that we are not bad people. Bad things happen to us, but we are not bad people. So how can we make cognitive reframing positive? Well, I have a little excerpt for you. Positive reframing involves thinking about a negative or challenging situation in a more positive way. This could involve thinking about a benefit or upside to a negative situation that you had not considered. So let's pretend, no, we're not pretending because this has definitely happened. You've been texting your friend and they have not been texting you back. You see that they've been online, living their best life, and you're like, why are they not texting me back? Like, we are friends. I love this person. Why are they not getting back to me? And then you keep sending them texts like, hey, what are you doing? Oh, I saw your thing on Instagram. Oh, you're still on Pinterest? That's cool. And you're like, why are they not getting back to me? A few weeks later, they text you back. They say, hey, so sorry, I was MIA. I know I was online and I wasn't ignoring you, but I had a family emergency and I just really didn't feel like talking. Now you will be hurt, possibly, because that person didn't let you know what was going on when it was actively going on. Or you could think about it, that person needed time to themselves and they don't owe me any sort of explanation. They don't owe me their time. They don't owe me a text back. So in a way, you have to release yourself from the expectations that you put onto people because once you start putting expectations onto people, that's when you can start hurting your own feelings and letting yourself down because that person cannot read the script that you have dictated for them in their own personal life. And I don't wanna say it's selfish, but it is a little bit selfish and it's something that we shouldn't put on the people in our life and we definitely shouldn't put that on ourselves because we are not the directors of other people's lives and we are not writing out some script and we're like okay you follow this part you follow this part you do this you do that that's not how it is the only life you can film and take credit for is your own life focus on your life focus on your part focus on the things that you need to do and that is going to free up a lot of energy inside of you and and emotions and as we know emotion energy in motion these things we have to keep them in balance or they're going to start messing with us internally causing anxiety causing stress causing depression 
causing irritability, causing physiological problems. We're going to start tensing up a lot more. We're going to have gastro problems. We're going to have that little frog in our throat. We're going to have a racing heart. We're going to have a racing mind, sweaty palms. We're just not going to be our best balanced self because we're so busy thinking about other things that have nothing to do with us. Remember, look at things from a different perspective. Go above the problem. Don't necessarily sit in the problem to try to figure it out. You're going to have to move around and find where you're comfortable above the situation so you can really drill down on what's going on instead of just perceiving what you think is going on, which can cause your problems because we're assuming things and you know what they say about assume. Drop it in the comments if you know what they say about assume. Since cognitive distortions or, or, or cognitive reframing is a knee-jerk thing, it's a, it's a habit in many ways, it's something that automatically happens, we need to practice noticing when we're having these cognitive distortions because they do automatically come up. When your friend doesn't text you back, oh, they must hate me. Oh, they must not like me. Maybe they're talking behind my back. Maybe they're doing this. Maybe they're doing that. Oh, my boyfriend didn't call me back. Maybe he's with someone else. Oh, my boss is really mad at me. Why is my boss ignoring me today? Why is my boss, this door closed? Well, maybe your boss is having a bad day. Maybe your boss's boss said something that hurt their feelings. Maybe something happened in their personal life. And unfortunately, now they're reflecting that towards you. And I know that's very hurtful and I'm sorry that's happening to you. But you have to think these people have lives and interactions with other people independent of you. So whenever you're having those automatic thoughts of this person, this person, this person, this person, just think to yourself, maybe this person is blah. Now let me go do X, Y, Z. Go find something to do instead of ruminating about what that person is doing. Free your mind and the rest will follow. Now, another thing we have to do is just choose one type of cognitive distortion to focus on at a time. And there there are different strategies and you can look these up for yourself. But my my best bet and best thing that I love to do for myself is just changing the perspective and also putting myself in that person's shoes. So many people are going through so many things that we do not know about because they don't want to talk about these things and maybe they feel embarrassed and we need to be more sensitive to what other people are going through. So how can we track and analyze better about what is going on in our minds as far as cognitive reframing is is concerned so we can be more successful going over that gigantic hill and stop you know being sisyphus every single every single freaking day um what we have to do we need to track the accuracy of our thought is this a true thought is this a thought i'm making up does this person really hate me do i really hate myself do i really not like x y and z we need to track our thoughts and we need to make sure that they are truly occurring in reality and not in our head. A lot of the problems that we have are, are problems we're making up in our head. Yeah, I know. We're gigantic storytellers. And we need to get that under control because the more we do that, the more frustration, the more uh, sadness, the more depression, the more anxiety we're going to have when we're not tracking what's happening in real time. We start making things up on a different timeline that's not even relevant to actual reality. We need to start testing our thoughts out and our behaviors. We need to start tuning into our own physical body to see what is going on when these cognitive distortions are coming up so we can reframe them. When we feel our friends are not communicating with us in the way that we want to, we may feel very tight. We may feel very closed in and just very, very hard and very angry and upset. That's when we know that we are slipping in to that cave of I'm distorting, of distorting reality. That's exactly what you're doing. You're literally causing your own discomfort with the thoughts that you're having. And thoughts are things. Thoughts cannot hurt you. But unfortunately, the thoughts that you have can lead you to do things that can be hurtful to you and to other people. So we really have to rein in our behavior and our thoughts when it comes to uh, thinking about things because... Uh, those things are so powerful and they really can manifest in real life. So we have to stay on top of those things. We have to evaluate the evidence for or against our thoughts. And what that means is, is that we need to get out our little notebook 
We have notebooks in the description below that I created via Amazon. So let's get to journaling, y'all. Um, so pros and cons. Okay, so for the past two years, we've all been in the house. So we're gonna write down, been in the house two years, it sucks. On the other side, we're gonna put, I am safe. Wow, we just reframed it and it was just that easy, that easy. Another thing, a lot of people have resolutions to lose weight. So we could say, I really miss eating a lot of junk food. On the other side, I want to eat healthier. Now you're reframing things and making it sound more positive. And it's not about just making it, making it sound good, good vibes. No, what we're doing is consciously thinking about a different viewpoint, which is an advantage to us, which is positive. It's not negative, it's positive. Us actually saying, being in the house sucks, I wanna eat a bunch of junk food, those are all negative bad things. So we want to move away from those things and reframe things in a more beneficial way for us. Mindfulness meditation is another way that we can get more familiar with cognitive reframing so we can avoid distorting things. And mindfulness is a gigantic buzzword and I heard it a couple years ago. I had no idea what it meant because my mind is already full. Like my brain can't hold any more things. But mindfulness is about being aware of the present moment, being there fully. And sometimes it's hard to do that because our monkey mind is always just moving and jumping around and just looking at things and just being all over the place, which is normal, which is fine. But sometimes we want a moment of serenity. We want peace. We want to be able to concentrate. And a great way to do that is through meditation. Now, some quick ways we can do that without giving into five to 45 minutes of meditation. Some people can do up to an hour. How are they doing that? I don't know. In the comments, just drop below, what's the longest amount of time you've ever meditated? Because I am super, super curious about that. What we could do is go into a room with a lot of things. When you're feeling stressed, when you're feeling a bunch of feelings, when you're having the feels, count how many chairs that are in the room. Count how many pillows are in the room. Look at a plant. Focus on this plant. What's going on with this plant? <laughs> this plant has leaves. I can see the, the veins on the leaves. I can see the the bark on the tree. I can see the pot. I can see the dirt. I can see that it's a very deep green. You're going into a more descriptive mode where you're able to focus on something else instead of what's going on with you. Now, when you're starting to break down things in the room, you're starting to break down the barrier in your mind that's blocking you from being there at the present moment. Another cool thing you can do, no pun intended, is grab a piece of ice and hold it in your hand. Now, your whole entire body is now going Going to be focused on that piece of ice. This ice is cold. This ice is cold. This ice is cold. This ice is melting. This ice is making my hand very cold. My hand is starting to go numb. Your mind is going to start thinking of other things associated with what's going on with you actively in that present moment instead of thinking about what happened two weeks ago. So you can zap your mind frame into a different spot by having little triggers that allow you to be more present. You can get a bracelet and snap the bracelet on your wrist. They also have anxiety rings and bracelets. They have a whole bunch of things that you can use to help you be more mindful. If you wanna be more traditional with meditation, just stop whatever you're doing, go into a quiet space and just sit there. Yeah, just sit. Just sit there quietly and take those moments to enjoy where you're at. Your mind will start to race a little bit. That's the monkey mind and that's totally okay. And when those thoughts come into your mind, just stop, visit them. Hello, thank you for stopping by. They're gonna go away. Some other ones are gonna show up. Oh, I want tacos later. That's great, now it's gone. These thoughts are gonna come in and out of your mind and that's totally okay because at some point they're going to stop. Now your first, second, third, fourth, fifth meditation that you're doing may not be quote unquote perfect in your mind because your mind wasn't completely clear and open to being quiet. That's okay, it's totally normal. Guided meditations are super helpful because you'll hear someone speak Speaking, or you'll hear some sort of low vibe music playing in the background where you can focus in on that to help turn your mind down a lot more. Now, one of the coolest things about meditation is as your eyes are closing, sometimes you're going to see like these geometric shapes going by. They're called phosphenes. I had no idea what these were, but I discovered them a couple of weeks ago. And when the person said the word, I said, I've seen those before. I had no idea what they were. Phosphines are amazing. Google them. It's like your brain is creating a magic trick. You just see all these different shapes 
and they just float around as your eyes are closed and your brain is is uh, creating these things and it's super cool so look up the word phosphenes i'm going to put it on the screen and say it again phosphenes google it look it up happy trails to you getting some phosphenes in your life you've probably discovered them before but weren't exactly sure what they were well now you know the last thing we're going to focus on is self-compassion i love this one now we're not going to go down the toxic positive route of if you don't love yourself nobody else will no 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 i don't even like that term and we'll probably discuss that later down the line but self-compassion just is about being nice to yourself there you go oh we're done we're done i can leave now no self-compassion is i'm not perfect and that's okay I'm having bad feelings right now, and that's okay. I'm having good feelings right now, and that's okay. I don't feel like doing that right now, and that's okay. You're giving yourself permission to feel. You're giving yourself permission to be authentic. Now, the first person you definitely have to be authentic with is yourself, because if you're not, how are you supposed to be authentic with anyone else? How can you truly be comfortable with someone else? Now, we could pull the whole fake it till you make it, fine okay do that if that makes you feel comfortable but eventually you will have to stop drop and roll into authenticity because it's going to have to happen people are going to see who you are and if you feel you can't get in touch with who you are a great place to start would be therapy i highly recommend it some people do not but i think that it helps to uncover a lot of things that we hide from ourselves subconsciously and that was going to move you into doing shadow work which is just astronomical and I've been doing that now for the past year and it's uncovered a lot of things and it's allowed me to move forward in my life which has made me feel so free sometimes I do still slip back into my old thoughts but I know that it's a learning process and every day we are challenged to uncover who we are it's not a one-stop shop we're going to have dark nights of the soul all the time and we need to be more um, aware of that and not see it as a bad thing but just see it as a positive thing and see it as we're alive and we're thriving and it's it's a happy time to be able to grow into who you are and to manifest the person you've always wanted to be the maybe the person you've always wanted to look up to now you are going to be that person and someone's going to look up to you so that's really it's a vibe (laughs) it's definitely a vibe and I'm really excited to see everyone's journey so just drop it in the comments and let me know what sort of journey you want to go on in 2022 and beyond sounding saying 2022 sounds really weird to me I don't know why but where are you going beyond today drop it in the comments I'm so so interested so if you haven't already hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell because a lot of cool things are going to be happening on this channel and I want you to be a part of it today we talked about cognitive reframing and just a few little techniques and examples of how we can work with cognitive reframing and overcome its automatic behavior that it has within us I know we want to get rid of it, but it probably will be with you for the rest of your life. But just acknowledging it gives you the power to do something about it. So um, knowledge is everything. Knowledge really is everything. So uh, I want to put up the little uh, gif of the more you know like the more you know there you go um so thank you so much for being a part of this listening session i guess this is chris introvert for meditation wait this is chris introvert i'm leaving it in here i'm leaving it in not taking it out i'm being authentic thank you so much for watching this channel go into the descriptions and find things in there there's a lot of cool things also hit the thumbs up and share if you care thank you so much and have a great day namaste